What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you what I believe is the three biggest mistakes people make when they make a lawn care business uh, or start a lawn care business. Um, number one is going into debt. Be careful if you've never done this kind of work, if you've never, you, you ain't even started your business yet or you just started it, now you're going to buy equipment. Don't go out here and do what some of these boys on YouTube are showing. And they're saying, hey, here's the best solo uh, lawn care uh, beginner uh, equipment setup. And then they're naming off $40,000 worth of crap. Don't do that. Go buy yourself a nice, you know, uh, used commercial mower or at least a high-end residential. Some of these high-end residentials now are just as good as the commercials were 10 years ago. I mean, they have gotten really, really good. Um my ZTHD is considered a high-end residential or beginner beginner level <laughs> level commercial. Um, it's got a 23 horsepower Kawasaki. It's got 30 or ZT 3100 hydraulics, 52 um, inch cut, and I think it is an absolutely amazing machine. It's only got four hours on it, but I, honestly, it outcuts my Ferris, which is a full commercial mower in like every way. Just a much better machine. Go out there buy yourself a nice used commercial mower or a nice high-end. Um, residential mower get yourself a nice rent to own trailer that's what i did i actually already owned this trailer before i had bought it for our four wheelers so i already had the trailer moving into it um get yourself if you got a you know a, a, a already got a vehicle to pull it that's good if you don't get yourself like an older model yukon like we use or like a tahoe or something that's not terribly expensive got a 5.3 in it old chevy 5.3 will get you through now that 4l60 might be an issue but we're, we're not an automotive channel here you know but just Get you something like that. Start yourself out with. Um, kind of know what kind of equipment you need and what you're going to want to do. Don't go buy every piece of equipment for every job. Like, don't get yourself a leap vacuum. Um, a, a this, a that, a that, this. You know, I'm going to do everything. You're brand new. Stick to one little thing and branch out from there. Anyway, the number two thing, which I have seen people do, is they have basically quit their daytime job, went to doing this full time, because they don't want to have a boss man. So they've kind of lived on their savings a little bit. I'm going to do that till I grow my business. I'm going to use it to buy me some stuff. And, uh, and, and man, I'm just going to love it. I ain't going to have a boss man anymore. Well, I got bad news. You got more of them. For every piece of property that you have, you're going to have a boss man. And that's the property owner. Um, luckily, I don't really have any bad property owners. Everybody I got is really cool. Uh, most of them have actually hired me to do other jobs outside of just mowing their grass. Because um, we do landscaping too. Um yeah, I mean, I've had them be really good to me. I've even had them come out and thank me for working hard and give me a bonus check. Um, here's an extra hundred dollars, man. We appreciate everything you're doing. Um, so kind of keep your customer base at the beginning small. Um, really learn, learn from it and get used to communicating with people. Cause in this business, if you don't want to communicate with people, you're going to have it rough cause you got to communicate with people. Uh, that's a big deal. And just understand you're still going to have a boss, man. You may not have co-employees, you're still going to have a boss, man. The number three mistake that I've made this one is giving estimates. When you go to give an estimate, check the property out as thoroughly as possible. Now, if it's just mowing or something like that, that's not that big a deal. Um, if it's a yard cleanup or a landscaping job, really take your time and consider what your materials are going to cost, how big the job is. Um, one of the jobs that I bid it on and before I even bid it on it, I didn't feel like I should have bid it on it, but in my mind, I felt like, well, I went out here and looked at it. So I need to at least give these people an estimate. Um, we went out there, the guy wanted a yard clean up, um, the leaves front and back and a couple limbs and, uh, hauled off and like, you know, some little trees cut down. We're not a tree service. They're like three, you know, four inch wide trees. Not, not really a big deal. Anyways, that's what he wanted done. So I went out there and, you know, looked at it and I got, you know, kind of excited, you know, more I thought about it. Um, but when I left, I just, in my mind, didn't feel like I wanted to place a bid on this job. But the more I thought about it, the more excited I got. Um, you know, oh, you know, it could be an easy job. Um, so I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to kind of shoot big here. I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty decent sized job. Um, I bidded $1,200 on it. Um, they immediately like was down for that. That should have been a red flag, but I was just excited, man. I got a super easy job for 1200 bucks. And, uh, we went out there and it was anything, but, um, this property has tore up every piece of equipment I have taken out to it each time. Um, the biggest problem is my leaf vacuum or the mower that we're, we're using to mulch some of the leaves up with, with under the leaves 
there's tons of debris, like beer bottles, um, pieces of clothing, ropes, um, metal cable. We found hog wire. We found garden hoses. We found car floor mats. Um, pretty much, I will tell you how bad it was. We actually found a six pack of beer that had never been opened. That was an inch below the dirt. Yes. Um, it actually got to the point after four visits, we went ahead and let this person know that we were no longer going to be able to continue the job and we weren't going to complete the job due to the amount of repairs we were having to do to our equipment after leaving each time. It was literally tearing up everything. It was sucking beer bottles and stuff up into our leaf vacuum, things that, you know, you, you think you, you can see, but you got a big pile of leaf. That thing's just sucking stuff up. Now, I'm not saying we sucked a beer bottle up and I'm not really sure what went in it, um, but stuff like that you know so really look your properties over before you make an estimate i know we all make mistakes that's perfectly fine but i'm trying to do this video that way you kind of have an idea of the mistakes not to make the last thing you want to do is go get yourself heavily in debt thinking you're not going to have a boss man just to have a lot of customers that you you don't like because they're you know treating you like a boss man which was what you were trying to get away from you know not everybody's going to get good customers you know there's going to be customers that i get that i'm i have a hard time dealing with I'll handle that when I get to it, you know, as professionally as I can, um, to do that. And then to go out and make an estimate on a piece of property that eats every bit of profit that you've made. So don't do that. Don't do that at all. We are an extremely low debt company. We absolutely love our customers. Our customers seem to love us. We've had, they've taken, taken very good care of us. We've taken very good care of them. Um, and as far as estimates, you know, ever since that mistake, when I go out to an estimate, they probably kind of get a little aggravated because I kind of look over the whole situation, unless it's just a simple mowing job. And then I'm just like, all right, you know, this right here, yeah, you're looking like 55, 60 bucks. That mowing's super easy to estimate. Um, most of the time I can do it using Google Earth. I don't even have to show up to the property. And you'd be amazed how much some customers actually like that, the fact that you ain't got to take time out of their day. So anyways, these are three mistakes. Be careful, don't make. If you're considering starting a lawn care business, just really think about what you're doing. Um, consider these three things and hopefully this will save you some headache, heartache, and butt hurt. So anyways, guys, we will catch you next time. Make sure you smack that subscribe button. Make sure you like the video. It helps us out a bunch. We will see you later.